Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 17th, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the storm spinning off the coast of California right now. We've got some offshore winds, some foggy conditions here across some of the Pacific Northwest, but that's going to be changing here as we go through this week, and you can see our next system out here organizing, and it'll move towards the coastline. It could bring some locally windy conditions with it as well. We'll take a look at those details as we go through the video here today. You can see the dense fog advisory out there. Spokane National Weather Service is always on top of things, so don't use your high beams slow down a little bit out there and watch out for some freezing fog as well. This is the current hazards. You can see we do have winter weather advisories and this is my bullseye here, the Oregon Cascades. With some nice snowfall amounts rolling in here as we go through the weekend. More on that here in a moment. You can see the dense fog advisories across eastern Washington, eastern Oregon as we speak. There was some dense fog out and about across some of the Puget Sound out there as well this morning. And you can see Pendleton, Oregon, windy late Saturday night through Sunday. Check out some of these gusts coming across the higher terrains. You can see Pendleton probably 47 walla walla into the 40s as well white pass 43 some pretty strong westerly winds as this system tracks across the area this is looking at snowfall probability greater than two inches in 24 hours and you see crater lake diamond lake and willamette pass there are under the gun here for some snowfall above 5,000 feet saturday night into sunday and if you want a nice affordable home weather station record all this crazy weather we get click on that link down below to save 10 percent off highly recommended it does very well against much more expensive equipment in my test now, taking a look at what's coming here, you got the NAM, the North American model, three kilometer high resolution on the left. You can see the offshore winds going on, some gusty winds coming through the gorge down there, through the Cascades of Washington, Oregon, all the way out towards the ocean areas. The HER showing the similar uh, wind pattern here. And as we go on in through the day today and on into tonight and tomorrow morning, you'll see these winds start to turn southerly off the coastline here as the next storm starts to arrive here. And some of the models have been showing quite a punchy system here with some very windy conditions for the coastline. The North American model actually backed off this latest run, but still pretty windy conditions across some of the coastal areas here. But look at this bent back occlusion, this very powerful area of winds with an occluded front there and a strong low pressure system here on the HER, the high resolution. The European is kind of showing a little bit what the her is saying we'll look at that in a minute but you can see some of these very gusty winds kind of bullseye in long beats here maybe up towards ocean shores and some of the northwest oregon coastline could be under the gun there as well and you can see on the north american model versus the her the high resolution rapid refresh big differences between the timing of this westerly surge coming down the strait of juan de fuca which would bring big winds to a whidbey island there also and you can kind of see it's much more delayed on the her this would be about 4 a.m sunday morning and still southeast on the high resolution model versus the north american model there. So some disagreement still to look at. And we'll again watch this as we go through tomorrow morning also. And I may actually go out to the coastline at some point on Saturday to check out some of this wind. If this verifies this bent back occlusion would bring some very powerful winds. Some gusts over 60 miles per hour would be possible with that. But the NAM of course shows less. You can see the European on the left comparing itself uh, yesterday afternoons versus this morning's. And this is hot off the press as I kind of waited to do this video so I could see some of this 12Z data here and, and try to look at this storm coming. You can see the offshore winds as we go through the day today. Pretty gusty through the gorge here. I heard there was a 69 mile per hour gust out there from Garrett Hartung. Portland and uh, Oregon storm chaser down there. Let me know that information. <clears throat> but you can see this um, the disagreement here between the Oregon coast getting the strongest winds and some of the Washington coast on this morning's run there. So still some disagreement model to model between the North American model and the high resolution models and just where the strongest wind is going to set up and what time the surge is going to come down the Strait of Juan de Fuca towards Whidbey Island. The HER also holds off that westerly surge a bit longer as well. And you can see, see yesterday afternoons kind of held off that westerly surge also. So Probably something that if you have any concerns on the coastlines of Washington, Oregon tomorrow or down the Strait of Juan de Fuca, you're going to want to check back for sure by tomorrow morning to try to see exactly when that surge is going to come down across the region and see just how much of this wind is going to get any individual area out there on the coastline. Now, taking a look at this significant wave height. So uh, Sunday morning might be pretty crazy wave watching out there. As you can see, the storm system organizing and approaching the coastline here. Some pretty good wave action up and down Vancouver Island, Washington. Oregon coastlines there. So get out to your favorite wave watching spot there for Sunday morning. Uh, maybe even the sun will peak out a little bit there and allows the photographers for some nice shots. Maybe Cape Disappointment probably going to be kicking off some pretty good waves at that point. 
But yeah, interesting stuff there if you want to do some wave watching. Now, taking a look at the European total precipitation in inches. I'm going to put this into motion here. And this, again, is hot off the press as the 12Z run. It's actually still running as we speak. We've got enough data here to look at this initial system rolling across the area. And by the time we get towards Sunday morning, showing about a third for Seattle. Better amounts for Portland, maybe up towards a half an inch. And the Willamette Valley kind of targeted here as well as this, the the football game there down in Corvallis, Oregon State versus Washington might get some rainfall as well. And you can see the higher amounts for the Cascades, coastal range here also, and lesser amounts across the central and northern Cascades of Washington. The storm has kind of been taking a further southerly tra uh, track and probably going to impact portions of northern California a bit better as well. And you can kind of see some precip getting over the mountains there, but you can clearly see the rain shadowing effect for eastern Washington and Oregon. Now, looking at Whidbey Island, you can see the last night's European, the 12Z ensemble run is not out yet, but it still showed out of last night, a gust getting up towards 51 miles per hour and plenty of ensemble agreement with that. The mean is into the mid 40s there. This is a story. You can kind of see some bigger gusts mixed in there, but still, it, this kind of gives that uncertainty in just where the strongest winds are going to set up. And right now, just showing kind of a typical blustery day out there. No strong winds on the control run, but you can see there is that potential. And this is Green Lake. This is uh, up towards the Natchez, off to the west of Yakima, the higher terrain out behind Mount Rainier out there. A lot to trails and roadways out there but if you're off in the back country there the cascades watch out for some of these big winds you can see that the control said 47 but a lot of ensemble members are showing gusts up over 50 miles per hour tillamook you can kind of see that scattered nature of some of these bigger gusts intermixed in there depending again just how strong the storm system is going to be and exactly where that bent back occlusion makes landfall if the bent back occlusion is going to be that organized now looking at Crater Lake as well, you can see, uh, yeah, a period of westerly winds rolling through here. Gusts up over 50 miles per hour, and some of these ensembles have even higher gusts, but you can see the ensemble mean right around 50 miles per hour as well. And I want to point this out for some of the valley areas out through Idaho as well. Watch this storm system come through here as we go on in through Sunday morning. You can get some pretty darn right strong winds. Pocatello, Boise could be under the gun here as well, gusting up over 40 miles per hour. So secure anything you might need to out there. Some pretty strong westerly winds rolling through the areas at low pressure system moves across Pacific Northwest. You can see the Rocky Mountains getting some big winds as well as we go on in through the day Sunday. Also taking a look at the European, this is max 10 meter wind gusts here. Same model. We're just looking at the accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts. And you can see some places approaching 50 miles per hour across some of the higher terrain of Southern Idaho and even the valley areas could be pretty darn right windy as we go through the day Saturday, the Rocky Mountains also and some of Southeast Washington, Eastern Oregon, gusty winds incoming. This is looking at the NAM. So kind of comparing that versus the European We'll put this into motion and you can see that it does include some of the valley areas with some 40 plus mile per hour gusts here and some big winds across the Rockies also. And this would end about Saturday or Sunday afternoon shown there. Here we're looking at Seattle, Tacoma and kind of good agreement right around a third of an inch here on the European and the control run says about the same there. And maybe another weak system taking a swing at us here as we go through the mid portion of next week. We'll watch that one coming up here over the next few days. This is Hoquiam out on the coastline there, a bit more rain up towards a half an inch there. And then maybe that next system bringing bring in some additional precip. And this is the GFS hot off the presses as well. This is 24 hour running total. You can see how the Willamette Valley kind of bullseyed there for that Husky Beaver game out there and big amounts across some of the Oregon Cascades, possibly two plus inches for some areas. And again, some snowfall for some of the higher terrain, the winter weather advisory is in effect for some of the Cascades of Washington and Oregon. This is the snowfall total according to, actually let's update this. Let's get the 12Z data in here. Why not? And we'll go to the deterministic run here, which will have some information for us and we'll just go ahead and scroll ahead here and you'll see kind of uh, yeah some nice amounts coming across the cascades of oregon and washington a little bit of an uptrend here in this latest run also a nice little coating for the olympic mountains there also some snowfall for mount rainier as well so heads up for that if you're traveling back and forth across the mountains and this is looking at the extended forecast. we got the GFS here. You can see the storm off the coast of California. And then you can see our storm, the next low, moving down across Oregon, Northern California into Washington there, potentially bringing some windy conditions and then building a ridge in behind that. And then the next system maybe just kind of brushing the area. A little bit of light precip potentially with that one. And as we go off into the extended, some interesting troughing trying to set up here, but these would not be very wet systems at all here for the Pacific Northwest as this ridging wants to kind of hang on. But 
then as we go off into the extended, we start to get some additional tropping trying to roll in here. But yeah, we're, you got to take out with a grain of salt this far out in the GFS as it shows some tropping kind of dropping down across the Gulf of Alaska at that point. But we'll just watch that day by day. Something to look forward to. This is six to 10 day precipitation probability outlook. So after these next two systems roll through here, you can see we got this below average signal here across the entire Pacific Northwest and above average temperatures for much of the area until you go further east, a little bit below average maybe out there. But this runs through November 26th there. So anyway, yeah, be watching this storm closely. You could see that model disagreement's kind of been going back and forth even between these individual models and just where the best winds are going to set up. Worst case scenario, it's still going to be pretty windy along the coastline there, but there could be some locally pretty intense winds if that low does get pretty strong there and burrows into some of the Washington or Northwest Oregon coastline. So I'll watch that again tomorrow. I may even do an update today if that storm trends one way or another or we get some pretty good model agreement. We'll see how that goes. But otherwise, I may be out there also on Saturday. And if I get a good setup out there, I will try to live stream that as well. But anyway, Hope you guys are liking these videos. We'll do this again tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, what else? Uh, I'll talk to you guys then. All right, see ya.